Good morning. I am just outside of Bluff, Utah, in the far southeastern corner of Utah. It's 7:15. It's dawn. The uh, you know it's it's getting lighter outside, but the sun hasn't really come up yet. And this is one of my favorite campsites I've had in a while. I know I say that a lot, but I just find a lot of amazing campsites. This one um, was just really peaceful, really beautiful. Let me show it to you. Let me show you a far away vantage point. So here's my car down here. This is this big, beautiful, giant cottonwood tree. And then in front of that, there's this little peninsula of land where that blue spot is. That's my chair. And there's this little peninsula connecting this spot where my chair is to the rest of the, the campsite there. This is Butler Wash. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. We've got cliffs all around. And behind me, this is called Combe Ridge. It's this fascinating geological formation, this, this rocky ridge back that stretches for, for miles and miles and miles. As far as Butler Wash goes, if you remember a few days ago, I went to these, I went to this viewpoint where I could see cliff dwellings across the canyon. That was the, those were the very upper reaches of Butler Wash. And now I'm maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 miles downstream from there. And um, this is still Butler Wash. This part of Butler Wash is known for its Native American cliff dwellings. I might go to one this morning. That's like half a mile from the highway out there. But, um, you know, I'm going to be seeing a lot of Native American ruins later on today, and so I'm not in a huge hurry to see the ones in this immediate area. And I'll be back in this area at some point in the future. I realized a while ago that I can't see everything in one trip, and trying to do that it just makes for an unpleasant trip, and so I've learned to not rush myself when it comes to seeing things. There's always next time, and on the off chance that there isn't a next time, oh well, you know, my life isn't measurably better or worse because of that. Let's head back to my campsite now, and I'll give you a closer look at my little spot. I'm standing in the stream bed just below my campsite here. I wanted to show you the amazing little um, shapes that the, the stream, that water has carved over the years into this sandstone. They're like mini slot canyons. A mini little pothole here. Just fantastic little shapes. And this pothole down here still has water in it. You can barely see the top of my kayak right there, so let's let's head up there. Here's the campsite. Very nice spot, very level. Got a nice view of the wash here. This is looking upstream. But the real great part is the little peninsula. How cool is that? Just this little three foot wide spot leading out to this nice little flat area. I had a great time sitting here last night and reading. The weather was absolutely beautiful. 70 degrees, didn't even need a jacket on. Then let's look at this tree. It's a beautiful, beautiful, big, ancient cottonwood tree. 
try not to get too close to the edge of this thing, but I mean, that's maybe three or four feet around down at the bottom. And it's just complex and gnarled up here in the branches. It is awesome. I'm gonna finish packing up now and breaking camp. Uh, I'm gonna go check out one of the cliff dwellings that I mentioned earlier. And then I'm gonna go take a shower at an RV park in town. I stopped by there yesterday and uh, the guy said that the showers were $5 and I'm happy to pay that. Again, when it's, when it's colder like this, it's just kind of a pain to make your own shower. You know, I could boil water on a stove or heat up water on the stove, but come on, I'd rather just pay the five dollars. So I'm gonna go do that, and I'll need to get gas in town, get gas there in Bluff. And then I'm gonna hit the road to uh, far, far eastern Utah, and then go into Colorado today also, go into western Colorado. It's 8.18 now, I've packed everything up. I resituated my kayak on the roof uh, to make it fit better up there and uh, finished organizing everything from yesterday. I just need to finish eating my Pop-Tart here and I'll be ready to go. And then uh, I'll try to find one of these cliff dwelling ruins. Not super confident that I'll be able to, but uh, I'll do my best. So I was planning on going to one cliff dwelling ruin or down by the highway a couple miles that way. But I realized that I was driving past, as I was driving past uh, the wash here, that there were two cliff dwellings just right here. So I found a dirt road leading over to the to the wash. And then I there's a there's a trailhead at the end of the of the road, or at least a sign saying no vehicles past this point, so following this little path to see where it goes, to see if it leads me to the ruins. I know these cliff dwellings are here, or at least were at some point, because I've downloaded the U.S. Geological Survey topographical maps to my phone for this region. And it says cliff dwelling and cliff dwelling in a couple of spots here. Usually things like that aren't marked on the maps, but these ones happen to be. Okay, so I see one ruin over here. Let's see if I can get down into the, into the canyon somehow. Fantastic, I found this ledge that goes down into the canyon and you can see some trails down there that presumably will lead back to the ruin, which was back there, and then there's a second ruin over here somewhere. So this is that ruin that I saw from the canyon rim. People who have come before me have laid out a bunch of pottery fragments. This one is interesting. It has a, a hole bored into it, maybe for some cord. These two have some uh, design painted on the outside. These are really nice examples of the patterned ones. There are also several quartz pieces. Little 
hole there, and then we can take a look inside here. Not much to see. It's a little square hole inside the wall here. There's some other mud ruins over here. Let's go check those out. But first, we've, looks like we've got some uh, some holes carved into the rock here. One, two, three. Some very faint petroglyphs. These are the other ruins. They're, uh, looks like they've been plastered on the outside. So they look like mud. They just look like stacked mud, but I believe there are rocks on the inside. Yeah, I see the plaster on the outside. Oops, I shouldn't have touched that, sorry. Plaster on the outside, and then some larger rocks inside. I don't know if these were living quarters, if these were storage areas or granaries. But there are a few different, a few separate chambers here. There's this one, which seems to be the largest, and another one over here, second one here, and then Maybe there was a third one right there. Oh, and there's one more thing I wanted to show you on this first set of ruins. So in the rock here to the right of the main structure, they carved some steps for getting up there. Here's a step, and here's a step. And I'm glad I came back here to show you that because I just saw all of these grinding marks. These are definitely not natural. I don't know why they would have ground these, but interesting nonetheless. Got some petroglyphs down there. And some more faint pet petroglyphs right here, very lightly pecked onto the stone over here. Can't quite make out what they are. And some more down there. Here's an inscription that says J.L. Butler, August 2nd, 1874. If that's authentic, that's pretty interesting because this is called Butler Wash, presumably named after said butler over there. There's a hand petroglyph right here, which I've never seen before. I've seen hand pictographs, I've seen the hands painted on, but never seen the hands pecked into the rock. You know, the more I look here, the more I see the faint, the faint uh, petroglyphs. There are quite a few of them, actually. Over here, I don't know if you can see this, but there are just lots of tick marks. I don't know if you guys find this stuff interesting, but I find it so fascinating. Especially these, these unrestored sites. And the ones that aren't um, super heavily touristed. All right, I'm gonna head further down the, down the wash now and try to find the second cliff dwelling area. So I saw this dark rock up here from across the canyon. Thought there must be petroglyphs here. Sure enough, there are some beautiful ones, very striking. Yeah, 
Here's another Wolfman one. Dennis and I saw one of these a couple days ago. These ones are amazing, and these are big. This looks like a cartoon character. I want to strangle whatever idiot it was that shot at this one. This thing is... I've never seen one like that before. I think this is one of the best human figures I've seen. Look at these beautiful birds. One there, one here. Wow. I've seen these in several areas. I don't know what they are. If anyone knows, please tell me. Again, some idiot with a gun shooting these up. These almost look Egyptian, don't they? And to give you an idea of size, this guy here is about three feet tall. Okay, so the other cliff dwellings are somewhere back in here. But I don't know how to get over there. Well, I don't know if it's where I want to be going, but I'm going somewhere. I did find a trail that led down into the canyon. But I think it has just ended. Maybe not. Okay, so I found a little faint path through the brush. In between following that and just bushwhacking my way through to the other side of the canyon, I think I found the second set of cliff dwellings. This kind of, kind of looks like mud, but you can see they start about over here and go over. Not much to look at, but, well, I'm here, so I guess I can check these these ones off the list. It's interesting, this is at the head of a little side wash that goes down here and then meets the main wash out there. There are tons of animal bones down here. There are bones down here, bones down here. I'm not gonna go scramble around over there. I don't, I don't think there's much to see, to find, to be honest, so. Okay. Now that I have probably a thousand spiders crawling on me, I'll add a thousand more, hike back across, and get back to my car. All right, I'm back in my car. I'm on my way to Bluff, which I'm just a few miles outside of. And uh, I'll stop there to get gas and to try to take a shower at the RV park. Here's a little shower stall in the RV park. Good enough. All right, I'm clean and showered finally for the first time in five days. So feeling pretty good about that. The shower facilities weren't the nicest I've ever been to. They needed a good, good cleaning, but Good enough for the likes of me and better than, uh, you know, spraying myself down with the spray bottle. I'm gonna leave Bluff now and head into uh, Huff and Weep National Monument, which is up against the Colorado border, and then I will be going into Colorado later this afternoon.
I'll tell you what, this national monument is remote. All right, so I've made it to Havenweep National Monument and I went into the visitor center to get some uh, literature about the park. I've been looking at it and planning out my, uh, my visit here. Starting from the visitor center here where I am right now, there's a two mile loop that goes, that visits several different ruins. Looks like a dozen different ruins. So I'll, I think I'll do that. Um, and then there are other sections of the, of the National Monument with other sections of ruins. But the roads to those areas are really rough. The, the ranger said that you need 10 inches of clearance, which is like a truck. Uh, and I don't have 10 inches of clearance. But I could just walk those dirt roads to get in, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'll do this first hike, and then I'll, uh, I'll make a plan after that. So these structures were all built between the 700s and the 1200s and then they were abandoned in the, in the late 1200s. No one's entirely sure why. Could be lack of resources, could be famine or drought or conflict or maybe they just wanted to move. Also I can tell that the ruins here have definitely been restored. Obviously they haven't been restored or rebuilt to like full buildings, but compared to what I've been seeing the last few days, they've definitely been uber stabilized. I don't love that. I think it looks a bit fake, but still interesting. There's a little rattlesnake here. I refilled this water bottle at the visitor center and it is the worst tasting water I've ever, I've ever had. It's really bad tasting. I do not recommend getting water there unless you're gonna bathe in it. I did that loop hike, it took about 40 minutes. Um, it was worth doing, I guess, uh, especially since I saw two rattlesnakes, that was pretty cool. But other than that, um, you know, I wouldn't, I don't know, I just don't like places that are too developed, and this feels too developed to me. Like the places that I saw this morning, and um, what I saw in the previous few days, much more interesting to me than than a place like this, but worth visiting if you're in the area. I I was, I am, so uh, I'm not going to go to the other sites, the other parts of the National Monument. I'm going to go into Colorado. Uh, I'm just about two miles from the Colorado border, so I'm going to continue east into Colorado and go to Canyons of the Ancients National Monument. I'm going to see one, maybe two, but probably just one more ruin there, and then I will um, continue north into, north toward Grand Junction, Colorado. So 
I'll just drive it to Colorado and <laughs> see what I feel like doing. Just passed through into Colorado. Surprisingly, I think this is the first time I've driven this car in Colorado. I've been to Colorado several times before, but never in this vehicle, so good to, good to introduce it to a new, new state. Driving down this little dirt road in canyons of the Ancients National Monument. Hopefully I can make it all the way to the end. There is a, um, there's a hike, a little hike I want to do here to a really pretty ruin. And then I'll be done with ruins for the day. All right, I'm at the trailhead for the Painted Hand Pueblo. It says a quarter mile to tower. I am the only car here. Now that's more like it. None of these, none of this visitor center and paved trail nonsense. Wow, what a beautiful little ruin. And even though this one looks to be in pretty good shape, like the stonework here is in good shape, there's still rubble and, and ruins down here. It still looks old. The other ones looked like they'd been made yesterday and just made to look old. Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful tower. The stonework and the masonry of the tower is pretty interesting. see the larger stones and then smaller stones in the mortar. Very cool. Wow, it's in good shape, isn't it? As the trail continues, it takes you to a couple more little ruins. We got this guy here. Up here, you can see some wall segment there, and there, and over there. I love these lizards. These are collared lizards. Beautiful little lizards. Found some pictographs. was a super enjoyable little little walk again made much better because there weren't any other people and there were no guardrails no no uh, paved paths no signs it just feels much more natural I feel much more like an explorer stumbling across these things for the first time it's only about a 15 minute hike total I'm almost back at my car now I'm happy that I got to cross off two new national monuments off of my list today. I have a national road atlas in my car and there's a two-page spread that has a map of the entire U.S. with all of the national parks and national monuments marked on it and so I cross off each one as I, as I visit. I think I'm done with ruins for the day. There are a couple more in this area but I'll leave those for another time. About two o'clock, I'm going to keep driving. I'm gonna drive a little bit further east, then kind of zigzag my way north toward Grand Junction, which is the largest city in Western Colorado. I expect that I'll make it to Grand Junction tomorrow, and tonight I'll camp somewhere between here and there. I've all of a sudden transitioned into farming country here. We've passed out of public lands and uh, getting into, into the private lands now heading towards civilization in fact I think probably the right side of the road is public land and undeveloped left side of the road is private land that's interesting 
I didn't expect this part of western Colorado to be so agricultural, but uh, it's been all farms for, I don't know, four, 45 minutes now? I think I expected just more um, canyon country, basically. I, ex I expected more uh, of southern Utah, but it's not. I know that as I get further north into, into Paradox and Naturita, that uh, it will be more red rock and stuff like that, but for now, it's just farmland. I'm heading up to find a campsite now. I'll fill you in on uh, where exactly I am once I get there. All right, entering Uncompahgre National Forest. Let's find a place to camp. Okay, I found a campsite. Uh, I, I drove a bit further than I needed to, so there's, um, so I'm east of Naturita, Colorado. When I was driving along the road to Naturita, I saw a sign that said National Forest Access this way. So I turned off the road and about uh, maybe seven or so miles up the road, I started finding some good, some good uh, campsites. I just kept going and going and now I'm like 20 miles up the road. I just kept going further up up the mountain. That's kind of a weakness that I have. I always want to see what's next, what's around the bend, or where this road goes. So uh, let me give you a tour here. I'm in kind of this this little clearing in the trees. This is Uncompahgre National Forest. Really pretty area. And Check this out, you can see some high Colorado Rocky Peaks, Rocky Mountain Peaks over here. So yeah, this is a very pleasant, very pretty area. Um, I think I'm at about 7,500 feet, so I think it'll get It'll probably get pretty chilly tonight. It is windy right now. Uh, I am starving. I haven't I've barely eaten today, so I'm gonna hurry up and eat. I'll make some sandwiches. Finish up my uh, my turkey sandwiches, uh, my turkey sandwich supplies, and then I'll check back in. Right. I have a full belly now. I feel much better. I ate the rest of my sandwich supplies. So I finished off the turkey and the, and the sliced cheese. And then I finished off the, uh, the triscuits because I ate some triscuits with pepperoni slices and cheese. Also very tasty. My belly is happy and I'm happy. This was a good day. And I'm gonna call it a day. This is uh, this is the end of the video. So thanks for watching. I, um, I think the plan for tomorrow is to go into Grand Junction, and basically it's gonna be a work day. I need to get online and and um, get, get some work done. So I'll be uh, I'll be at the library and a Starbucks, wherever I can find good internet. And so I don't know how much I'll record tomorrow. I might just uh, record a little bit and then maybe append it on to the next day's video. I don't know, we'll see. If I do a lot, it'll be a, a standalone video. Again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know if you have any questions.